the, the research of this paper was triggered by the uh, invitation that Enrique Baccherano and Jody Rossell organized at the end of 2011, uh, a most interesting congress in Salo on the interactions between hominids and carnivores. So this paper is, is the result of this uh, reflection. Uh, so here we go. This is the paper that has been published, so if uh, people want to have more information about, uh, about the, what I'm going to be talking about, uh, you can access it. It's, uh, it's uh, open access. So I will just summarize the paper. So um, Safaraya, as I indicated before, uh, enjoys a very strategic position with three ecological niches. Uh, it is situated in a, in a very steep escarpment. Uh, uh, overlooking some steep slopes surrounding the sierras, and in the back there is a, a polie uh, where uh, herbivores used to roam. Uh, I've already talked about uh, about uh, the, the the site. I mean, it was excavated uh, in 82-83 and 93-94 by Cecilio Vadroso uh, in the entrance and in the in the Salo de, del Fondo, and the uh, the. Um, the sequence that was excavated is, uh, has about a, a meter and a half. So these are the rest that were found. Uh, uh, Neanderthal uh, remains representing nine individuals. I will go very quick. Uh, sign of cannibalism, since we have lots of cut marks on most of the bones, and some of them were burned and found in the, in the hearth. Uh, as I mentioned before, the, the affinities of the mandible is rather interesting because it, it uh, looks like more like Amud and Shanidar rather than the classical uh, Neanderthals. And the Musterian tools are, are uh, really uh, classical with a substantial amount of Levallois technology. So, in the environment of the cave, they were a carnivore and, and, uh, and Neanderthal and carnivores competed for those herbivores. Uh, roaming in the surroundings. So the, the, the question was who killed the prey and who scavenged Neanderthals or, or the carnivores? On the basis of uh, the taphonomic study that uh, Anne-Marie Moine conducted and which is published in the monograph, uh, the proposed uh, faunal exploitation model was that Neanderthals were specialized hunters of Capra Pirenaica. Uh, this was based on, on all those uh, surface modification evidence, which I will not review because it is in the paper. Um, however, given the rich environment in herbivore prey diversity and the continuous occupation of the site by carnivore species, this model does not reflect fully the interaction between carnivores and neanderthals. So uh, we decided I mean, to uh, have another crack at how Neanderthal and carnivore competed for uh, resources. Uh, so the first thing we did was to look at the favored foraging areas of safari fauna, and second, to try to correlate the presence of carnivore uh, and prey with the Neanderthal occupation. Uh, reminding him of the three ecological niches uh, of Safaraya, uh, what we did was we uh, in line with uh, optimal foraging theory, which states that topographic characteristic of uh, the area surrounding a site has a determining influence on funnel composition of archaeological deposits, we, we assign the fauna to uh, the geo geomorphological domains uh, surrounding the, around the cave. So this is the, the, the matrix where we can see that uh, it is very likely that, uh, that uh, in the cave, around the cave, uh, the herbivores that were present were the Capra pirenaica and Rupi Capra, whereas the carnivores were uh, the panther, the kuon, and vulpes vulpes, uh, and so forth for the southern uh, sloping hills and the, and the poli. This is the database that we uh, that we have used. Uh, on the left, we have the carnivore uh, elements along the stratigraphy. Uh, we can see that Pantera is well represented, as well as uh, Kuan Alpinus. Uh, on the right, we have the, the time series of the elements that were found uh, of the herbivore, and we can see that Capra Pirianica presence is more or less continuous. And we have the second most important uh, herbivore is uh, Service Elephus, 
and then Rupi Carpra, and then the other large herbivores. And as a proxy for the presence of Neanderthals, we just took the, uh, the number of, uh, of uh, lithic artifacts along the stratigraphy, including non-Levalois and Levalois uh, items. So we, we computed the uh, correlation between those time series, and we can see that the correlation between carnivore and herbivore is 0.71 whereas between lithics, i.e. the Neanderthal presence and herbivore, it is lower, 0.558. Now, if we look at capra, we can see that uh, the correlation between capra and the presence of the panther remains is 0.56, which is about the same as between capra and, and uh, lithics, 0.55, and it is less for kuan. For service elephus, we can see that there is a higher correlation for the human presence of lithics, 0.48, uh, and then we have Panteras 0.38 and less for the Qon. Whereas for Rupi Capra, you can see that there is a more of a correlation between Panther and the presence of, of uh, Rupi Capra remains. Now, correlation analysis generally is used to determine whether two variables are interdependent or covariate. We cannot make assertion about causal relationship uh, between them. We cannot say that y causes x or x causes y. So we can do multiple regression uh, to try to explain uh, the, the, the link between the time series. For example, here we have a herbivore elements uh, as a function of lithics and, and carnivore elements with a multiple regression coefficient of 0.773. The drawback of multiple regression is that here the independent uh, variable L and C are assumed to be direct and related causes of the dependent variable H. So this disregards the fact that uh, these, uh, these variables are indirect causal relationship between them. <laughs> so uh, path analysis was developed by Professor Sewell Wright from the University of Chicago. He was a, a geneticist and he's one of the founding fathers of classical statistics. And, uh, and, and he developed this technique, which is used in uh, medical research and epidemiology. So it is an extension of multiple regression, and it takes into account the effect of the correlated uh, variable, independent variables L and C, for example. And this allowed to infer causal relationships between, for example, here, the herbivore pre-accumulation and the presence of the accumulators, which are the Neanderthals and the carnivore taking into consideration the reciprocal influence between, between the, the two independent uh, variables. The path analysis uh, generally is, is depicted by a structural model. I mean, if you want to do path analysis, you have to decide you know, the, 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 the arrows of influences. Um, so it is generally represented by a path diagram. And, and so we, the, the terminology is, is in blue, we have uh, what is called the predictors. Pantera here, Kuan analytics, and we are trying to explain uh, the accumulation of capra the criterion. So the single-headed red arrow are the path from cause, predictor, to effect. And the double-headed black curved arrow between Pantera and Kuan is just a correlation between the two. So there is no, uh, no consideration of, of, uh, of, of causal relationship. So the strength of the influence is described by path coefficients. There, there are standard partial regression coefficients from uh, correlation matrix. So, I mean, the input that we use is the correlation matrix. And, and uh, the, the levels of influence must be presented in sequential order from left to right. So, um, here are the, the, the path coefficient that we uh, obtain. Um, Pantera, the to Pantera's effect on the accumulation of capra is 0.469. Uh, whereas for lithics is 0.3788, um, the influence of lithics on capra. And we, we had seen that the, that the, uh, that the correlation were, I were identical. So we can see already here that the Pantera has more influence on the accumulation of capra elements, uh, whereas Qon had very little influence uh, on the accumulation of uh, capra. And what is interesting also is to note that uh, the correlation between Pantera and Lithics is very low. So the interpretation is that Pantera had a greater influence in the accumulation, 
uh, Neanderthal did not compete in hunting capra due to alternate period of occupation, which probably is, is demonstrated by the fact that there's a, a very low correlation between the accumulation of lithics and, and Pantera. And the Kuhn had relatively important secondary access to capra carcasses brought in by humans. Um, the low correlation between Pantera and Kuhn means an alternating occupation of the cave uh, by those two carnivores. Uh, if we summarize, I mean, the, uh, the, 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 the direction of influence between the accumulation of uh, uh, Rupi Capra and Pantera and, and Lithic, we can see that there's a much greater uh, influence between Pantera and Rupi Capra of 0.48 uh, versus uh, Lithics. So this is consi consistent with the conclusion uh, that we found for Rupi Capra. With regard to service elephas, we can see that the influence uh, of lithics with, uh, with accumulation of service is 0.425 and it is 0.316 uh, for Pantera. So there was a greater direct effect of Neanderthal compared to Pantera. Service effectively foraged in the southern sloping hills and forests of the Poly, and transport of carcasses to the site by carnivore would have been uh, very difficult. Then we, if, we, if, we, uh, if we lump all the carnivores together, and the herbivore, we can see that the, 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 the influence of the carnivores on the herbivore uh, accumulation is, is almost twice as high as, as the influence of uh, Neanderthal on the herbivore accumulation. So we can conclude that the cave was a carnivore then occasionally occupied by Neanderthals, and herbivore bone assemblage was in greater part contributed by the carnivores. So if we integrate the taphonomic study, uh, the foraging, uh, optimal foraging uh, consideration, and the path analysis, the main findings uh, put in doubt the validity of the model that Neanderthals were specialized hunter of Capra Pyrenica for the following reasons. Capra was hunted by both Neanderthal and carnivore in the immediate surroundings. However, Pantera was definitely the main predator, as shown by the archaeological record and the path analysis. And its presence with Neanderthal was not coincidental, but most probably mutually exclusive. They alternated in the cave. For Rupi Carpra, Pantera was the overwhelming accumulator, and hunting of this species by Neanderthal was extremely rare, if not nil. Neanderthal were the principal accumulator of service elephus, which forged at some distance from the cave, and in light of the very few carnivore surface modification, it is probable that carnivore scavenge service remains procured by Neanderthals. Finally, other large herbivores like Bos and, and Equus, uh, which forge at a distance, uh, show only anthropic marks on mainly adult subjects, which points towards predation by humans with secondary access by the carnivore. Thank you.